In this video, we are going to find the Fourier series coefficients of some fundamental signals. So once the concepts are understood for some common signals, then more involved signals can be solved quite easily. So let us first write the synthesis expression that is we have x of t that can be expressed in terms of a summation form that is k minus infinity to infinity the coefficients a k exponential to the power plus j k omega naught t let me be more descriptive over here and re-express it as a minus 2 e j minus 2 omega naught t plus a minus 1 minus 1 omega naught t plus a 0 and for that the exponential is simply 0 and similarly for the right side we have a 1 e j 1 omega naught t plus a 2 e j 2 omega naught t plus so on so these values are case which are also in the subscript of coefficient. Now with this, say we have a function which is x1 of t and this is simply cos omega naught t and we want to find the Fourier series coefficient of that. So from Euler's identity, we know that this is simply 1 by 2 e j omega naught t plus e minus j omega naught t. Now comparing it with the Fourier series in the expanded form over here so we have x1 of t and this is equivalent to 1 by 2 coming from here and this form which is e j minus 1 omega naught t and this is added with over here that we have again a 1 by 2 e j so this is a plus 1 and this was a minus 1 so we have a plus 1 omega naught t that is this Euler's identity is rewritten in terms of the synthesis expression so from inspection we can say a subscript minus 1 is equivalent to 1 by 2 and similarly a1 is again equal to 1 by 2 so this is just from inspection so the Fourier series coefficients with respect to k so when k is equal to 1 and minus 1 we have a 1 by 2 and a minus 1 by 2 so this is the plot of a k now again the x of t in its standard form we have x2 of t which is now sine of omega naught t so this is equivalent to 1 by 2j e plus j omega naught t minus e minus j omega naught t now this would come over here because we have a minus 1 over here so we have this minus and 1 by 2j so we have a minus 1 by 2j and the exponential which is j minus 1 omega naught t and then this part again multiplied with this but with respect to this that is we have now a plus 1 by 2j e j plus 1 omega naught t now again from inspection the coefficients with respect to k at k 0 we don't have anything but at k equal to 1 we have a plus 1 by 2j and at k equal to minus 1 we have a minus 1 by 2j so similarly if we have e j omega naught t so this means that we can equivalently express this as 1 e to the power j 1 omega naught t so that is the coefficient k is 1 
and a1 is 1 so as for all other coefficients the value is 0 for this signal and the value is only available for the first coefficient that is a1 now say we are given with a signal which is 1 when absolute value of t is less than say t1 and it is 0 when when this absolute value of t is greater than t1 but less than the time period value that is t by 2 and for this the signal is periodic with period t so in other words visually speaking we have a signal which is sort of a square wave and it is starting at minus t1 and terminating at t1 so this time period is minus t by 2 to t by 2 so again we would have the signal which would be periodic so for this square wave the coefficients a k are simply when k is equal to 0 that is the dc value so this is simply t1 omega naught by pi and when k is not equal to 0 so a k is a sync function that is we have a sign of an argument that is k omega naught t1 over this argument itself that is k pi now for the triangular wave and the square wave you have to look into the other video given the chord and I'm not going to prove it over here so next we have a DC value say we are having a signal X of T which is simply 1 that is for all values of T so what would be the Fourier series coefficients of that it is quite easy to analyze this expression so let us first find a0 which is 1 by t integration with respect to time period t x of t dt so this means that we have this signal which is starting from minus infinity and going to infinity in time but we are interested in this time period which is capital t mentioned over here so in this time period the amplitude is 1 and the time is capital T so the overall area would simply be 1 into T that is T so this would result in simply T so hence our A naught is 1 by T times T and this is simply equal to 1 but what if K is not equal to 0 so we have an a k again the integration with respect to t x of t e to the power minus j k omega naught t dt now if this is 1 so this means that we have e to the power minus j k omega naught t dt and this is 1 by t now this signal is just oscillating at omega naught or in term in terms of k times omega naught so hence this lobe would cancel with this lobe and so on this lobe would cancel with this lobe so all of this would be equal to zero so hence our a k when k is not equal to zero is equal to zero and a zero is simply one again we have a very important example and a very important signal that is x of t is now sum of impulses shifted impulses delta of t minus nt and the shifts are with respect to n equal to minus infinity to infinity so now why is it important so we have a signal in time which is having an impulse strain for 0 1 2 minus 1 and so on so this is our x of t so this is important because by means of this impulse strain we can sample a given data for example my own voice is being sampled and what should be the sampling frequency so for voice we know that the spectrum is usually from 
around 100 hertz maybe a little less than that to approaching 3.5 to 4 kilohertz so the spectrum is in this range because it's real the voice is a real signal so we have an even spectrum so why i am going to the spectrum this is because i want to find a separation between these two signals these two are the time period between the two impulses and how to find that the way to find that is by means of nyquist theorem and the nyquist theorem states that the sampling frequency fs must be greater than or equal to two times the most significant frequency which we call that f max significant so you know that this is going to you know it's approaching zero as time uh, as frequency tends to infinity but beyond this point the signal has very little amplitude or very little power so we restrict ourselves to 4 kilohertz so the sampling frequency fs should be greater than or equal to 8 kilohertz and similarly this time period t naught is equivalent to 1 by fs so this is equal to 1 by 8000 so this gives us the time period between the two impulses well let us come back to uh, finding the Fourier series coefficients of this signal so for that we know that ak is equivalent to 1 over time period that is t and integration over the time period t x of t e to the power minus j k omega naught t dt now in impulses it is very important to find the time period that is we have to find the exact range of it now if you are going to start from this point and going onward so we are going to have sort of two impulses and that would make uh, mathematics a little bit crazy because at the impulse we know that the height is infinity and the width is approaching zero so what we can do is we can select this region where we have one impulse at the time period so say this is minus t by 2 to t by 2 so we have 1 by t minus t by 2 to t by 2 delta of t that is this signal which is delta of t this is delta of t minus capital t and so on so coming back to this expression so we have e to the power minus j k omega naught t dt so delta function multiplied with any function so this function will be evaluated at time zero because delta function is available at time zero so we have e to the power 0 because t would be 0 so this is simply 1 so as we have 1 by t and then minus t by 2 to t by 2 delta of t dt and we know that the area of direct delta function over this period is simply 1 so hence our a k is simply 1 by t so we have found out the Fourier series coefficients of the signal x of t now what would be its synthesis expression so synthesis expression x of t is so we simply have for the periodic impulse train the synthesis expression as 1 by t a summation k minus infinity to infinity exponential of j k omega naught t this is our x of t now you must be wondering again we have an infinite summation and we started with a summation which was an infinite that is we had initially a sum of impulses that is an impulse train but now we have sum of exponentials so why bother all this mess and why go into the synthesis expression and why is this important for sampling 
so to all of that we know that the impulse function that is the direct delta function delta of t it's more of a theoretical signal and and not a practical signal on the other hand this exponential signal we have a good measure of this signal so while we cannot create this we can create exponential signal for example we set harmonics that is we set k equal to 1 we are considering just the one harmonic for this signal so we got this signal but but when we consider five harmonics now the signal is resembling kind of a direct delta function the amplitude is not infinity it is around 13 and you have some oscillation at lower values but if we increase the value to 10 so these oscillations are decreasing at the same time the amplitude is getting higher so for 100 harmonics if you sum the first 100 harmonics now the value is quite high as compared to the low values which are almost negligible and has we have a good measure of a direct delta function by means of an exponential signal right so in the last part we made the sum of 200 which is given over here so as this is the use of an alternate representation of a periodic impulse train